Do you ever think beyond this wealthy country we live in to other parts of the world that are less fortunate? I just divide the current leader of Chad, which is part of Central Africa, south of Libya. Chad Africa is in a comparison perspective three times the size of California, United States. Devai has been the leader of Chad since 1990. He since then won an election in 1996 and 2001. As president of Chad, Devai promised to establish a multi-party democracy and end the lawlessness and conflict that has endured in Chad for so long. Throughout his presidency, this did not succeed. He in turn caused conflict and corruption and was known for brutally repressing the rights and freedoms of individuals in Chad and the security forces routinely committed serious human rights abuses. Chad is known for its abundant resources in oil, uranium, and gold, but under the leadership of Dubai, it's still one of the most poverty-stricken countries in the world. As you can see in this visual, it is very poverty-stricken. Dubai was accused of misusing income from Chad's oil industry spending much of the proceeds for weapons to aid in the fight against his detractors rather than for the food assistance, infrastructure development, and education and health pro programs that his country so desperately needed. Idris Dubai is known for playing a key role in the war between Chad and Sudan throughout the 2000s. He is accused of using child soldiers in the conflict, sometimes as young as 10 years old. And you can read about that under his uh, Wikipedia, uh, under Chad Dubai. It seems as though the country of Chad is depending on a president who has got them nowhere and will, lead, will continue to lead them down the same road of destruction. The corrupt leadership leads to many problems in the poverty-stricken country of Chad, Africa, such as economic problems, outstanding resources that fail to be used, irrigation problems, health problems, and military downfall. The average population of Chad, Africa is 12 million and 400,000 are added each year. An average yearly income for a family of six is only about $1,600. Most families make between $100 and $200 a month and live off of 2 to $5 a day, depending on their income. The overall income of Chad is very low. A bone-chilling percentage of 80% live below poverty line. In 2011, the economic growth got as low as 1.6%. We can correlate the astonishing poverty rates to the leadership of Chad, Africa. Chad's economy comes primarily from agriculture and oil. A large 80% of the people who are employed are working in the agriculture and farming industries. They produce rice, potatoes, sheep, goats, etc. Chad's chief trading partners are the United States, France, and China. Poor weather conditions in 2011 to 2012 affected the harvest greatly and caused inflation to rise to 7%. In 2003, the leader of Chad Africa, Idris Dibwe, spent $3 million on guns that were supposed to go to oil proceeds. Also, last year he spent a special fund to protect 10% of oil revenues, and this angered their donors. This fund was supposed to contribute to the education and health of Chad. This resulted in the World Bank taking away millions of dollars that were supposed to go to aid projects in Chad to help the unfortunate. Actions by the leader and the government are why Chad is so poor and why there is so much political corruption. Their government is basically in complete control of Chad by a Republican government. The mass quantities being spent by the government and leader is in correlation to why the country is in deep poverty. A few sources where I found this information are ironnews.org and nbcnews.com. Over 28 billion gallons of oil. That's 900 million barrels. Geologists in 1993 determined that's how much oil is in the Doga region of Chad alone. Though that may seem like an astonishing amount, really it's not that much if the government doesn't put it to good use. The corruption of the Chadian government effectively keeps it pinned down in poverty despite all that. The World Bank agreed to help fund a pipeline so that Chad could get there oil out as they are a landlocked country. The book High Value Natural Resources and Peace Building contains a wealth of information on this matter. In 1999, the Petroleum Revenue Management Law 001 had passed through the Parliament, meeting the World Bank's criteria of setting down a plan for oil revenue spending and creating an oversight committee. Roughly 85% of the revenue was to be spent on various poverty aids and child, while the remaining 15% was fair game. I have here a pie chart describing that. 
this little piece is what the government was supposed to be using. Well, everything else was supposed to be going to poverty alleviation. But by 2005, the government was already making plans to alter the law. After a face-off where the oil minister threatened to cut off oil production, the World Bank banked under pressure and they loosened the requirements for oil spending, effectively ending their deal. And the money for the oil revenue wasn't really going to what it was supposed to be going for. Instead, it was going to military and useless infrastructure. In a span of less than 10 years, military spending increased 22-fold. And information from The Guardian reveals that money was spent on a university in Bilba even. That might seem like a good thing, but it's a town of 50,000 people and only 6,000 people per year pass the entry exam. And then there were some other useless infrastructures, such as a 25,000 seat sports stadium. Over 900 million barrels of oil and still millions of people left in the dust. The broken promises made by the government and the useless spending are only two examples of how corruption in the government has kept Chad from pulling itself together. They might be able to do a better job if they had a better leader. The Republican Chad has a shortage of water. The water that they do have is contaminated. The citizens of this country are lacking in clean water, and unfortunately, the water that they find isn't as clean as the water that we as Americans drink. According to UNICEF.org, only 48% of urban residents have access to water, and only 2% to basic sanitation. This problem of contaminated water is a result of poor leadership within the Republic of Chad because of the country not having an economical abundance. Thankfully, there are organizations that help. Since there is poor leadership, the Republic of Chad's focus isn't on the quality or the quantity of water. Of course, with Chad being the seventh poorest country in the world, it is a difficult economical problem that results in the citizens of Chad to not be able to afford water. There are organizations like UNICEF that have made it possible for some areas of Chad to obtain access to sanitized water. There are now wells that these citizens can go to and they're able to get clean water to drink or use for other miscellaneous purposes, like washing clothes or doing the dishes. Other reasons that Chad has to undergo these difficult circumstances of not having sanitized water is because of its country's political corruption on the nation economically. These countries, this country's leaders don't contribute money to sanitize their scarce or dirty water. Thankfully, countries around the world are helping to provide a means for these citizens to have access to clean water. But even then, the country still has a difficult time being able to afford drinkable water because of the leadership of the country, not the country. Uh, the poor economical uh, system, uh, Chad is one of the poor uh, country in the world. Uh, almost 80% of the people uh, live under the poverty, the poverty line. Uh, that's why due to shortage of food, water, and adult and children education, they always suffer from malnutrition. In fact, even after they become ill, they visit the doctor in their cases. The, when people are educated, they, they know what to do in the situation, but corrupted people doesn't care about education. Only about 40% of the children, ages 5 to 15, goes to school and chat. Unfortunately, all of the uh, all of the 40% doesn't complete their education in time uh, or at all. In addition to that, the, real, uh, the rate of girls, girls attending school is also very low. As a result, not obtaining enough education, majority of people really know what to do when unexpected uh, situation occurs. In Chad, there is only one doctor uh, for, for every 244,000 people, in fact, the corrupted government spent only 3% of its total budget on health issues. In, in addition to that, there is a, uh, less than one qualified health worker for 1,000 people. As a result, there is not enough hospital to take care of thousands of unfortunate patients. The, uh, according to the UNICEF, there is like more than 5% HIV uh, patient in Chad and they have they have enough resource, but uh, the corruption uh, corruption led the whole nation to the poor and unhealthy.
Chad maintains a power. Chad maintains a powerful military, but instead of using it for handling their armed conflicts, they use it for their military diplomacy. One example of this military diplomacy would be a few years ago when France needed Chad's military support in Mali. Chad agreed to this, but only on the condition that France would ignore some bad policies held by the Chadian government. While Chad is using his military for this military diplomacy, they are not using it to handle their armed conflict with Sudan. Chad has decided it does not like the Sudanese president, and they want him gone. But instead of just dealing with it or sending their own military to overthrow him, they have decided to fund rebels in Sudan. And in turn, Sudan has funded rebels in Chad. The most notable of these rebels are the Janjaweeds. The Human Rights Watch has paid very close attention to these Janjaweeds and has reported that they routinely attack civilian targets, and sometimes even with helicopter gunships. A UN report found that child soldiers are not only among the rebel groups, but among Chad's own military as well. That same UN report brought to light instances of rape and other sexual violence carried out by the Chad military, sometimes even against children. This leaves the people without a protector. While the people are afraid of death at the hands of the rebels, or rape at the hands of the military, they also have to be afraid of where they step, because the civil war has left landmines all over the country. The civil war has torn apart the country and its, the families within. And it could have been avoided if Chad had only not done the exact same thing to Sudan. But it will continue so long as Chad continues to use its military to diplomacy to avoid these issues from being addressed internationally. Today we spoke about the poverty in Chad, how Chad's leader Dubai is bringing the country to poverty and destruction by causing conflict and abusing the rights and freedom of the people of Chad. Chad cannot depend on clean water because of their water because their water is contaminated. It is very difficult for them to access clean water. Even though there are organizations that help the citizens of Chad, it is still very hard for them to have drinkable water. The economy of Chad comes from oil. The country is deep in poverty because the government is incomplete control of Chad. Instead of spending money on oil, the leader spent it on guns. This is why Chad is one of the poorest countries and doesn't spend a lot of money in health care. Even though it seems there is a lot of oil in Chad, it is not enough to take Chad out of poverty because of corruption. Military in Chad is not used properly. Civil war could have been prevented, but now it has been, it has torn the country apart. Also, there is currently a problem in the military because they are recruiting children. According to infopolice.com, Chad is about 80% of the size of Canada.